Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope y'all are doing well. Today we're going to talk about window aggregations and streaming systems. Just to recap a few concepts that you want to need for this video. There are two types of time, event time. This is the time at which the event actually happened. And then you have processing time. This is the time when the system actually observed the event coming in. I do have another video talking about the different concepts of time in Streaming Engine. So if you don't know the difference between the two, I would recommend checking that out first. I'm going to link it in the description below, or you can just go to my channel and look at the previous video that I uploaded. With that being said, let's talk about windowing and how it works in a streaming system. So yeah, in windowing, you window the input data into fixed sized windows then you process each of those windows separately. Let's talk about a few examples to make it clear. Let's say you want to do some of all the website clicks every hour. That means one of your window can be from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. You sum up all the clicks that happen between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. Then you move on to the next window from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. That's a different sum, 4 p 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. And then 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., another sum. So you can see you're dividing time into fixed sized windows. In our case, we did it by one hour, but you can do every five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 24 hours, totally up to you. But the idea is you buffer up all the data for a given time, and then you run some kind of a aggregated, aggregated operation on it. So yeah, examples include sum of all website clicks every hour, you can have the average of all the food order cost every hour. So you have a bunch of food orders coming into your system every hour, and you want to see what's the average price or average cost of one order. Or you can do things like find the max latency at a given interval, something like that, right? So how does this window essentially work? Your system is buffering up incoming data into windows until some amount of time has passed. After that, the result will be sent downstream. What this means is if you're, if you're windowing every hour, let's say for the hour from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., the system is gonna buffer up all the events coming into the system between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. Once the clock hits 2 p.m., it's gonna actually sum it up and then release that sum downstream to a different job. So in the meanwhile, the, the job is not really emitting an output. It's waiting until the hour is done before it actually emits the computed output. So how does state work, right? We talk about buffering and how the system is gonna buffer up all the events for an hour before actually spitting out the result. So how does memory work when it comes to buffering? So while the window is live, all the events are stored in memory. What this means is from the time between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m., when your job is counting every single event to sum it up, each of the event, it's living in memory, right? That's what I mean by live window. The moment 2 p.m. hits and the job outputs, uh, outputs a message with the sum, you don't really care about all the events that happened in the last hour, so you just dump them from memory and start again from 2 or 1 p.m. So once the window has been finalized and the message is sent downstream, you clear that window's data from memory, okay? So now that you have a better idea about how windowing works, let's talk about what time do you use for windowing? As talked about before, you have two concepts of time, processing time and event time. So when windowing, you do need some kind of a concept of time. Let's talk about which one you wanna use. So you could theoretically use both, both windowing by processing time and windowing by event time works, but they have different pros and cons, and you want to make sure your application is suited for using one over the other. Let's talk about processing time first, because this is going to be the easier one. When you don't care about the actual time when the event happened, that's the perfect, uh, that's the perfect time to use processing time when windowing. Examples would include website logs or system metrics. For things like these, you don't really care too much about when the event actually happened. You just care about the event 
the fact that the event happened and it is there in your system. So in cases like this, when your, your computation does not really use the actual time of the event too much, you can use processing time. It's just going to make it a whole lot simpler for you. The next windowing is going to be by event time. This is the gold standard of windowing. So most windowing of applications do the windowing by event time. It just happens that most applications of streaming systems, they do care about event time. However, even though this is the gold, gold standard, it is going to come with a set of problems. You need a way to handle late data when you are dealing with event time. The concept of late data and how to deal with it, I did explain in the previous video, so I would recommend checking it out. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description below, so please check it out if it does not make sense. So why do you need to handle late data? How to handle late data, it's there in the other video, so please check that out. But now that we know that uh, there is late data, let's talk about why do you need to handle the late data. In an unbounded stream, you don't know when you are done processing events from a particular time window. Events can come late or it can come out of order. Let's run through an example to see how late data can affect your windowing. Let's say you're summing up all the events that happened from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. So your window here is 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. As events are coming into your system between 10 and 11 a.m., the your your job or your engine is just buffering the data and summing the tally up, right? So it's tallying it up and storing everything in memory between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. When it is 11 a.m., your let's say your sum is 500. Now that it is 11 a.m., you know that all the events of this window should have arrived by now. So you're ready to output 500 and finish the window. By finish the window, I mean forget about the sum, output the message downstream, and start summing up from zero again for the next window, which is going to be 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. However, with late data, we know that late data means a data coming into your system later than when it actually happened. So let's say it's 11, 10 a.m., and you get another event that just came into your system. And the event time in that event is, let's say, 10.30 a.m. So that event is from the window 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. However, you are at 11, 10 a.m. And you have already outputted the sum 500 of that window. So now what do you do with this data that came in? Because you can't increment it to 501 you don't even have it in memory anymore. That's what late data causes if you are windowing by uh, event time. Okay. Uh, yeah, so if you're windowing by event time, you do need to handle cases like these. There are things you can do with watermarks. I do have it in the other video, so please check that out if you're confused. Uh, so yeah, that's the problem with event time. However, when doing the windowing by processing time, you just don't care, right? You just window things by when they arrive into your system, it's easier. So even if this data came in at 11.10, the processing time was going to be 11.10, right? Uh, so instead of accounting for this event in your 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. window, if you were doing it by processing time, you'll just account for this event in the 11 a.m. 12 p.m. window. However, if you're windowing by event time and it's 11.10 already, you are just going to ignore or discard the data because your window has already been completed. So that brings you to the question which time to use for windowing. As I said in the last video, it totally depends on your use case. Windowing by processing time is much, much simpler. So if it fits your use case, please just use that. Don't worry about late data and event time. However, as I told you before, event time is the gold standard when it comes to windowing. And in most applications, you will be forced to window by event time because processing time would just not make sense. So 
So yeah, in that case, if you have an application like that, where event time is a must, then you would have to come up with some kind of a compromise between uh, between waiting for the data for a long time and uh, emitting all the aggregations of your windows in real time. So I talk more about it in the late data video. So please take a look at that if you have more questions. And of course, if you have more questions than, that I don't address in the video either, please leave them in the comments below and I'm gonna try to get back to you as soon as I can. With that being said, I hope you guys have a good rest of the day and I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.